coming off this helicopter is a seven-month-old baby. He's fighting for his life. That's him, Theo Mazaris. He has a respiratory virus and is being transferred into this pediatric ICU from another hospital. A nice, comfortable crib just for you, honey. The team rushes to get Theo on oxygen. This is Theodore coming from Stanford, seven month old with increased work of breathing, shortness of breath, congestion. As Theo moans, I know what is being left unsaid by the doctors. He's still not out of the woods. An unprecedented surge in a respiratory illness among children. Rising number of cases of the flu, RSV, and COVID-19. It is a common virus, but due to the isolation of the pandemic... Kids have not gotten exposed. They've not developed the immunity. A Michigan's six-year-old has now died from RSV. Dallas County has reported its first flu the death. The first death of a child here in Southern California. For nearly three years, I've been reporting from the pandemic's front line. Now, America is facing yet another surge. But this crisis is different. It's attacking children. This is our pediatric pandemic. The floodgates have opened. They're coming, they're coming in droves. Our hospital is being overrun and we need help. I wanted to find out why hospitals are overwhelmed by such common viruses. Is it just because of an unprecedented number of sick kids or is something else at play? Theo's parents weren't allowed on the evacuation helicopter. Hi guys. Hi. They arrived nearly two hours later, nervous wrecks. So I think this is the peak of his illness right now, and it's making it really hard for him to breathe. But we're here and he's being watched. If we are worried about him, that he's going in the wrong direction, we will tell you, okay? Later that night, the doctor delivers bad news. Theo is indeed heading in the wrong direction. They will need to take additional measures to try to save his life. This is Yale New Haven Children's Hospital. It has one of the only pediatric ICUs in Connecticut. So they made a commitment to not turn away any child in their state, but it's been challenging to uphold. I have a four-month-old here with RSC. I was trying to admit here that perhaps she would be better served up at Yale. We have calls from Massachusetts, from Rhode Island, from Maine, from New York, saying we have a child who needs an ICU. Can we send them to Connecticut? And we said, you can't. We don't have the space. They don't have enough nurses, and they don't have enough beds. They even converted their playroom into an ICU. Most other hospitals don't have the equipment or expertise to care for children as sick as Theo. Pediatric patients are not just small adults. A newborn breathes 40 times per minute, and that's completely normal. But a two-year-old breathing 40 times per minute is not normal. Very few people know how to really take care of a sick child, even if they take care of sick adults. The difference can be life and death. Critically ill children are four times as likely to die at hospitals without pediatric expertise. Why can so few hospitals care for children in emergencies? Even in Connecticut, one of the most well-resourced states in the country. To understand, we need to go way back, before the pandemic. The pediatric unit shut down suddenly. Tufts Hospital for Kids in Boston shuts down. Since 2008, 20% of pediatric departments in hospitals across America have closed. Closing its pediatric intensive care unit. Kids tend to need less complex care than adults, and that means they make less money for hospitals. Transition into additional beds for its adult medical service. Decades of profit-driven decision-making have gutted pediatric health care. Closures could be life-threatening for sick kids. We are losing such a vital service. But there's another reason kids aren't lucrative. The government pays for the majority of children's health care in the U.S., mostly through Medicaid, and they woefully underpay. In America, saving kids is just bad business. That's created health care deserts for critically ill kids. There are going to be children just sitting and languishing in emergency departments, not getting the correct treatment. Especially in rural areas. Families will have to go out of state to find a pediatric ICU. And left hospitals like this one 
to shoulder the burden. During my three days inside this ICU, I routinely see parents crying. Theo's parents tell me he's normally a feisty little kid. Michael and Jonathan have a foster child with RSV. They're hoping to adopt him. Four-year-old Talia has been in the pediatric ICU for more than 100 days with a rare disease that may have been triggered by COVID. Our life very, very much so revolves around our children. I need my daughter to come home. Thinking that your child might die, that fear is something that you don't really recover from. In order to uphold the commitment the hospital made to the state, the nurses are stretched thin. It's overwhelming. I think everyone is a little burnt out. A little might be understating it. I think our goal is to always try to make it so the families don't feel the weight of maybe what we're feeling. I feel like I'm a mom of a hundred people. And when I get home, I'm not such a good mom, but as nurses, that's what we do, right? We care for everyone else but ourselves. As the transfer calls come in, the team has to ask themselves, can they take this patient on? Do they have enough nurses, enough space? Will the other patients suffer? There have been times where we have pushed those limits. There are times when it doesn't feel safe. I see the stress in my colleagues, but the alternative is not providing good care to my patients. And so it is really balancing this that, that keeps me up at night. That's a balance they shouldn't have to strike. This surge has exposed a failure of our healthcare system. The U.S. is ill-equipped to care for children in emergencies. Respiratory viruses don't just occur near pediatric ICUs, nor do more common accidents like car crashes. Children deserve access to care in their own communities. The government can fix this by incentivizing hospitals to invest in pediatrics. Congress has considered recent bills, such as one that would increase Medicaid payments and another that would invest in pediatric critical care, but none have been signed into law. That's unacceptable. The next morning, Theo turned the corner. He made it home for Christmas. It's time for America to start taking care of its children. Saving kids doesn't have to be bad business.